The beginning of the Winds of Winter is going to be action-packed. The second half of A Dance with Dragons spends most of its runtime establishing four major battles that are all going to occur at the beginning of the Winds of Winter. Two of these were initially supposed to occur in A Dance with Dragons, but they had to be cut due to that book having way too many pages, according to both the author and the author's publisher. Those battles are the Battle of Ice, which will feature Stannis fighting against the Boltons and the Freys in the north, the Battle of Fire, which will be Daenerys' forces without Daenerys, who is still out in the Dothraki Sea at the moment, fighting against the slavers in order to hold Marine. The Battle of Blood will feature Euron attempting to essentially seize control of Old Town using some form of blood magic that we don't know about yet. And lastly, and most importantly for today's purposes, we have the Battle of Steel, which will involve the forces of one... Aegon Targaryen, who was not present in the show and is a very important character going forward into the Winds of Winter. So, a brief refresher on the Aegon cause, because this book came out 11 years ago and he was not included in the show. Aegon claims to be the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Elia Martell, supposedly killed during the sack of King's Landing by Gregor Clegane. However, it is remarked by Kevin Lannister and by others that the babies are unrecognizable, and supposedly, I'm using a lot of supposedlys here, he was spirited away by Illyrium Apatis and by Varys in order to preserve the Targaryen dynasty for the future and hopefully reclaim his rightful seat someday. We meet him in A Dance with Dragons through Tyrion's perspective as Tyrion joins this motley crew of Aegon and his uh, people training him to rule, essentially, in order to reach Daenerys because he hopes to forge an alliance with Daenerys in order to have a very strong claim to the throne. However, Tyrion convinces him to change his plans. He goes west instead of east, abandoning this potential alliance with Daenerys in order to attempt to claim Westeros for himself. This is going to be a tall order, and because of this, he needs to claim castles in order to be able to do anything at all, pretty much. Uh, and in order to do that, he first claims Griffin's Roost, which is the former seat of his hand, John Connington, uh, in the hand's hand has grayscale, which is worth noting. Uh, and additionally, he is planning on taking Storm's End, the seat of House Baratheon that is currently not very protected by Stannis. There are a lot of misconceptions about what the Battle of Steel will be. Particularly, a lot of people seem to think that this is going to be a battle for Storm's End. It's going to be a battle of Aegon initially claiming Storm's End from the Baratheons. However, we know that this is false. It cannot be the case. The Wind to Winter has been anticipated for many years at this point, and in those many years, particularly the early ones, George R.R. R. Martin released a number of sample chapters. One of those sample chapters in particular, Arion 2, gives us a lot more insight into the Aegon cause. Arion is traveling to visit Aegon in order to essentially assess his claim and figure out whether or not her family should ally with him, and she meets with one of his advisors, Halden Halfmaester, who is, as the name would imply, the maester that trains Aegon in a number of different areas. Through Halden, we find out some crucial information that does really throw the idea of what's going to happen in this battle into question. The following is a quote from said sample chapter, Arion 2, The Winds of Winter. Has no one told you, Halden Halfmaester favored her with a smile thin and hard as a dagger cut. Storm's end is ours. The hand awaits you there. So, we hear from one of Aegon's closest supporters that he and his horses have already claimed Storm's end. This absolutely tracks the timeline, as the last time we were in John Connington's shoes, as he is a point of view character, we learned that he was already planning on taking Storm's end, particularly doing so by guile. People have pointed out over the years that there is one very uh, essential method that they would likely take in doing this. The company that is helping Aegon take the throne is called the Golden Company. It's a very old sellsword company from Essos, dating back over 100 years at this point. And their banners, as the name would imply, are bright gold with skulls on them. Uh, they are not the baddies, according to them, though. Uh, additionally, the Baratheon sigil is another sigil that is gold, and there are very few in Westeros that have the same coloration. So the thought is that the uh, Golden Company will use their golden banners to pretend as though they are Baratheon troops perhaps returning from the north from Stannis' long-suffering campaign that he's been attempting for many, many moons at this point, and gaining it that way, as it's not very well garrisoned at this point. However, this does not seem to wholly circumvent the possibility of battle. 
We hear from Halden again that not only is Mace Tyrell going to march on Storm's End to try to take it back for the crown, but Aegon and the Hand, John Connington, plan on meeting him in the field, which is a really, really strange idea. Storm's End has been besieged many times before, and it has held many times before. Meeting him in the field is something that they would only do if they have a concrete plan to win outright. And furthermore, knowing Mace Tyrell's character from both previous books and conflicts before the books, we can assess the fact that it doesn't even seem like the battle is likely to happen. In order to further figure this situation out, we need to assess Mace Tyrell as a character. He's generally a bit of a buffoon and generally very fanciful in a lot of regards, and he thinks himself a great warrior, particularly. This reputation rests on his perception of himself beating Robert Baratheon in the Battle of Ashford, though it was largely won by Randall Tarly before Mace Tyrell even arrived. Furthermore, for the rest of Robert's rebellion, all he did was sit outside of Storm's End and have a bunch of feasts. That is his experience with besieging Storm's End prior to the events of the story. However, once he marches on Storm's End again in the main timeline in the Winds of Winter, he'll find John Connington marching to meet him. He is likely excited and expecting feasts and tents and whatnot, and not actual elements of a battle that he is not as familiar with as he would like to. This makes it seem as though it is quite likely that the Tyrells, or at least a sizable portion of the Reach forces, could flip sides in order to hopefully help Aegon. It's also worth noting that a good portion of their fleet, the Redwine fleet, which is the biggest naval force in Westeros, save for the Greyjoys, is very busy at the Battle of Blood, dealing with Euron at the moment. So they do not have as many forces as they'd like. Furthermore, Mace's presence here at all does tell us a little bit about the story at large, as he has said he will not leave King's Landing until Marjorie is declared innocent at her trial. So this shows that Marjorie is likely declared innocent in the Winds of Winter. All signs seem to be pointing towards the Tyrells, or at least a sizable portion of the Reach forces, joining with Aegon in his reconquest of Westeros. It's worth noting that they were, in fact, Targaryen loyalists during the Rebellion, albeit not the most enthusiastic ones. And, on a more meta level, uh, the idea of House Tyrell getting their power from Aegon originally could echo Aegon's second conquest, now reclaiming the continent from the crown that he had lost previously. Furthermore, if we're getting even more meta with it, George R. R. Martin is the master of the anticlimax. Things like Quentin's entire arc in A Dance with Dragons, the end of Rob Stark's journey, a lot of similar things. He enjoys kind of subverting expectations, for lack of a better term, but not doing it as poorly as the show did. And my thought is, it seems quite likely that at least one of these four battles at the start of the Winds of Winter is not going to be a battle in its entirety. The Winds of Winter can only have so many pages, and it's likely that there are going to be even more battles beyond these four within the Winds of Winter, just from what we know is set up about this book regardless. So it would make a lot of sense if the Battle of Steel, as the fans have called it for so long, doesn't even occur. It's just more of a political meeting that ends up swaying the Reach to Aegon's side and helping him claim the throne of all Westeros. This would help further isolate Danny and potentially aid to her going mad and burning King's Landing, as she does in the show. And that would help that make a lot more sense. So, this has been my theory about the Battle of Steel not even happening. What do you think of the theory? Do you think it's going to happen? Do you think it's not going to happen? What do you think of Aegon's cause as a whole? Personally, I really like him. I think that it's a pretty decent option for Westeros as a whole. I'm also biased because John Connington is one of my favorite point of view characters. He's incredibly interesting. And overall, I do support Stannis more than I support Aegon. But overall, I don't think that Stannis has a great chance of claiming the throne at this point in our current story. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I do have another video on Stannis coming soon. This is more of a bonus video that I just had this idea and wanted to write it out now and get it out there. So yeah, I really appreciate it. If you liked, subscribed, uh, commented, all that typical YouTube junk, it really helps support the channel, helps me out. Uh, and yeah, I will see you all soon with another Stannis video. See you soon.